What's going on, Swim fans? Welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you five of the best drills for backstroke. If you're a beginner swimmer or you're a more elite swimmer, some of these drills are foundational to swim faster and smarter than ever before. So if you wanna take your swimming to the next level, make sure you subscribe, like this video, let me know what questions you have down below in the comments, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Now the first drill I have on the board is slob plus cup on forehead. Now let me break down this terminology so this all makes sense for you. Slob simply means streamline on back. And what you're doing with this drill is you're simply going to balance with a cup half filled with water right on your forehead. You're gonna start out with streamline, and you're just gonna put the cup, fill it halfway with water. We did a fun challenge with Katie Ledecky where you had chocolate milk on your forehead and on the back of your head. Make sure you put water in there, but basically you're focusing on body position, head position, and really you're focusing on balance. This is the foundation of all swimming, streamline that is, and when you're doing backstroke, you're on your back. So go ahead and try this drill. It's actually not as difficult as it seems, and if you're a little bit more advanced, you can actually work through a progression where you start with just kicking in streamline with the cup on your forehead, then you migrate into swimming, and eventually, you actually get into full-on swimming backstroke with speed. So you're actually able to sprint backstroke with a cup right on your forehead. And by focusing on that balance and that head position, you're gonna reduce your drag and you're gonna swim much, much faster. Now you might be thinking, well, why would I do that? Why would I swim with a cup on my forehead? Sounds kind of silly. But if you look at my beautiful illustration, the blue line is the water, the black stick figure is you, yes you, swimming. And as you can see the head position is absolutely perfect. If I were to draw where the eyes are looking, the eyes are looking right at the sky, right at the ceiling, and as a result, more than half of the head is underneath the water. That's only gonna happen if you keep your eyes on the sky and on the ceiling. What happens then is when you look up, it pushes your hips up, and as a result, you have the least amount of drag because you're displacing the least amount of water. If you're not looking up and you're looking at your feet, you're not gonna be able to keep the cup balanced on your forehead and your legs are gonna sink and you're gonna displace much, much more water and you're gonna go slower. And that's why this drill is great for any level of swimmer. Go ahead and work through that progression of kicking, then swimming, and then swimming fast. You can do that maybe over a series of 425s. And the whole point of the drill is focusing on your balance, with your head position and your body position. That's the first drill, hope you guys like it. Let's move on to drill number two, and that is 12 kick switch. We're continuing on the theme of balance, only this time you're actually gonna balance on your side. When you swim backstroke, you're actually rotating using your hips and shoulders from side to side. And as you rotate from side to side, you're not quite getting all the way 90 degrees parallel or perpendicular to where you started. Instead, you're actually at about 45 degrees. But on this drill, you're gonna exaggerate the motion, you're gonna keep your eyes looking at the sky or the ceiling, and you're actually gonna rotate all the way onto your side 90 degrees for a full 12 kicks, then you switch by taking an arm stroke. You wanna focus on rotational momentum when you take that arm stroke after the 12 kicks, and you're focusing on that hip stability. Same concept applies where we did the slob with the cup on your forehead. If you lift your head or you move your head around, your hips are gonna sink and you're gonna move much, much slower. And I have a pro tip here, fins help a lot with this drill. They also help with all these drills, but for this one in particular, because you're gonna feel like you're not moving very fast when you're balancing on your side. If you have a little bit of turbo thrusters on your feet that are fins, that's gonna help you out as well. Before we get into the next drill, I wanna share with you today's sponsor, AeroFit. The AeroFit breathing trainer helps you improve your breath efficiency, anaerobic threshold, and vital lung capacity. This will give you the edge that you need to get faster in all four strokes and boost your endurance for longer swims. You start with a guided vital lung capacity test in the AeroFit Sport app, and then you'll begin a swimming specific training program that takes just five to 10 minutes a day. After four weeks of using the AeroFit, I increased my vital lung capacity by over 25%. The app was super easy to use and gives me real-time feedback. It feels like a video game and I control it with my breath. 
Head over to the link in the description to get 15% off the AeroFit Breathing Trainer. This discount is just for the My Swim Pro community, and I know you guys are gonna love it. Thanks again to AeroFit for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into those drills. The next drill I wanna to talk to you guys about is three strokes plus 12 kicks. Now this is using the foundation of the last drill that we talked about, but we're gonna add three strokes instead of just one. And what this does is it really allows us to focus on hip rotation. Because when we take just one stroke, it's really difficult to get into a rhythm. And when we do the 12 kick switch with that single arm, you're basically just focusing on balancing on your side. In this drill, you're applying a little bit more speed and rotational momentum with each different cycle. So what I mean by that is you take three strokes and then you pause for 12 kicks. So you actually got into a swimming rhythm with those three strokes before you had to pause for 12 kicks. Now after the 12 kicks, you take three strokes again, and this is really important to focus on hand placement as well. So you've got the rotational momentum going, but because you're taking full on strokes, remember you exit the water with your thumb and enter with your pinky. As you're focusing on rotational momentum, this is a really good drill to work on that. Now a faster version of this drill, which I didn't put on the board, but it's a great one to try, is three strokes and six kicks. So instead of pausing, pausing all the way on your side for those 12 kicks, you're gonna pause for six kicks. Another disclaimer here, not disclaimer, but clarification, when you're doing this drill, only pause on your side for the six or 12 kicks. When you're doing the three strokes, you actually don't wanna rotate all the way to your side. You want those to feel a little bit more natural rotation. So maybe you're looking at 45 degrees of rotation right there. Now drill number four is one of the most intense and high performance drills that you can do if you time it correctly. And that is dolphin kick with backstroke arms. So you're gonna do a dolphin kick for every single arm stroke that you take. Now this is a very high tempo, very high intensity, a little bit more advanced, and what you're trying to do is match one stroke for one dolphin kick. So when you're doing one stroke cycle, that should actually be two dolphin kicks. You wanna lunge your body through the water. This will really increase your tempo and force you to speed up your arms. One of the challenges in backstroke is that we get comfortable. We feel relaxed on our back, and as a result, our tempo slows down. We don't want that because we're trying to swim faster. And sometimes we're trying to focus on how do we move our arms faster. And the, one of the ways that we can do that is this drill, dolphin kick with backstroke pull. Focus on power, and it's all about maximizing your power per kick and per stroke. Drill number five is catch up. This is again, a little bit more complex of a drill. And what you're trying to do is unlike normal freestyle catch up where your hands touch out in front, instead your hands are actually going to tag each other while they're in the air. So if you're not a strong kicker and you're not good with the legs, you're gonna sink like a rock. So make sure you have good stability, good kicking, use fins, it'll make it a lot easier. And if you swim with a little bit faster tempo, it'll make this drill a little bit easier. Just make sure you coordinate, hand-eye coordinate this because it's going to be very difficult. So you might have to start a little bit slower to figure out your hand position and how that works. And then once you get the hang of it, you're gonna be flying. Well, figuratively, not literally. Now I do have a bonus drill that I did not write on the board. Then I'm gonna share with you a workout that you can actually apply this. And my bonus drill is two arm backstroke simultaneously, double arm backstroke. This is for a shallow pull. If you guys enjoy this, make sure you give this video a like because I'm throwing this out there off the top of my head. But this is one of my favorite drills that sort of counters the over rotation that can happen from some of the drills that I talked about on the board. So three strokes plus 12 kicks and also 12 kick switch. These can actually have you over rotate, which is good for a drill, but you don't wanna have that be your foundation because while you do want rotational momentum, at the same time, you wanna have some power with your pull. And by swimming double arm backstroke, two arms at the same time, you're gonna get a little bit of a shallower pull and you'll get the feel for that. Now let's go ahead and talk about this example workout that I have on the board. Now this is just one set of the workout and this is really focusing on your underwaters. If you're a little bit more advanced swimmer, you know that the fastest swimmers in the world are spending most of their time underneath the water. Now here's a great set that you can do that. You're gonna start with four 100s you're gonna alternate backstroke and freestyle by 25. Ideally, you're in a 25 meter pool to do this set. Then you're gonna go 475s backstroke. By the way, the 4100s is just a warm up. So you're really getting your body nice and loose 
on those backstroke 25s, you should be focusing on the underwaters, trying to be consistent. When you get into the next set, the 475s backstroke, this is where the magic happens. I want you to focus on your kicks off the wall, the number of kicks off the wall that you take. Here's an example of a swimmer that would take three dolphin kicks on the first 25, four dolphin kicks on the next 25, and then five dolphin kicks on the last 25. Now this is entirely dependent on your skill level, your breath control, and your speed and power in your dolphin kicks off the wall. If you're a little bit more beginner, you might start out with one dolphin kick, two dolphin kicks, three dolphin kicks. If you're a more elite swimmer, you might start at seven or eight dolphin kicks and then work eight, nine, 10 on the next 25s. Next, you're gonna go 450s backstroke and you're gonna negative split the number of dolphin kicks that you take. Now, what that really means is you're gonna take more dolphin kicks on the second 25. So technically, you're not negative splitting, but work with me on this. So in that example, maybe you take five dolphin kicks on the first 25 and then seven dolphin kicks on the second 25. Try and take two more dolphin kicks on the second 25 than you did when you push off the wall. This should be pretty difficult because your body is not fresh when you do that flip turn. So you're going into the wall, you do a flip turn, you're already fatigued, your heart rate is elevated, and you've been swimming because that's how it is in a race and that's how you actually improve. Finally, you're gonna have 425's backstroke. We're putting it all together, descend one through four, but you should think about descending also the number of dolphin kicks that you take. Again, figuratively, not literally. So you're going to put more intensity and power as you descend through 425s, maybe you go five dolphin kicks on number one, then six, then seven, then eight with your maximum speed, and you should be flying down the pool or underwater on that final 25. Now, if you guys like the structure of this workout, you're gonna love some of the workouts that we have in the My Swim Pro app, especially some of the training programs that are designed for the individual medley and even some of the stroke types. It's great to follow a progression that you can build off of and have the workout personalized to you so that the intervals and the set structure is dynamically created just for you. And you can get that in the My Swim Pro app, available down below in the description for free to download on iOS and Android. Make sure you subscribe to a plan. And even if you don't subscribe to a plan, you can write in your own workouts and keep a track like a swim journal. So I hope to see you guys in the My Swim Pro Facebook group. That's where we chat about all of these things, swimming and how to swim faster and smarter than ever before. That'll be linked down below in the description. Let me know what you guys have question-wise down below in the comments, and I'll see you guys at the next video. Happy swimming, bye.